Okay, we already have a number of questions here, and I'm going to um, go ahead and, and, and answer them. So Francine is asking, do you think free iron is it dangerous enough to be a cause of breast cancer, as mentioned in the recent report from the Department of Biomolecular Sciences in Urbino, Italy? There's no question that free iron is a, 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 an, an oncogen, uh, oncogenic substance, but it is very rarely found, uh, and I believe that uh, through a very uh, rich intake of um, um, antioxidants like resveratrol, uh, you reduce that risk. I, for the moment, I would uh, believe that um, it is not one of the major factors um, of breast cancer, but, uh, but uh, we cannot say that it isn't. I, I just wouldn't worry too much about it. Then uh, Marek Voik, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I think that the, that would be a very complicated name for me to to mention. Uh, okay, so he was unable to stay for the whole session. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Merrick. Then I'm going to go to Stella Serrano. Uh, it's been said that artificial sweeteners contribute to cancer. Is Splenda also considered to be one of these uh, sweeteners? Well, Splenda is derived from uh, sugar, from uh, unrefined sugar, and I think that it lowers um, the risk uh, tremendously, but there are others that are better, like stevia, and uh, more and more you are finding out that uh, uh, stevia, which was um, not used widely due to its um, very characteristic taste, aftertaste, people stop using it. I would urge you to go back and, and, and look for better products because it's become a much, much better sweetener. But yes, artificial sweeteners are carcinogenic. Um, but also, I want to mention that you have to take very, very high amounts in order for it to be carcinogenic. And uh, so you may think that one or, or, or two little of the envelopes is, is not sufficient to develop cancer, and you would be right. But the problem is that you find a lot of these uh, sweeteners hidden in many, many foods. So we have to be careful about them. Uh, Tamar Sego, what do you think about using Thermoscan for yearly monitoring. I think it's a very good idea, although the um, uh, we have not come together as far as the interpretation on thermography. Um, sonograms are much more reliable uh, as of now, and uh, MRI is the best. Uh, so yes, you can avoid radiation from um, uh, mammograms with thermo thermography, but as I tell you, it is not uh, as standardized. The interpretation is not as standardized as uh, that uh, as the interpretation with sonogram and MRI, and and so I would uh, confirm that. Uh, again, Stella Serrano, I am 52 years old and uh, had um, DCIS, uh, that is the inside of carcinoma and had a mastectomy and currently being monitored without further uh, treatment. What can I do to minimize the return of breast cancer? So as I mentioned, uh, Stella, you probably were over-treated, but, but still I, I think you reduce risk significantly. So what you can do is uh, do a program, a preventative program, with a number of uh, supplements uh, and also natural progesterone. So my recommendation is that you take natural progesterone. It's usually in cream. You can also have it in, in, in pills. And exercise four hours a week. If you want a, a, a more specific program, and, and we uh, have many women in very, very specific programs, give us a call and, um, and hopefully a visit. And we'll, we'll establish a very um, comprehensive program to reduce the risk of this uh, tumor ever coming back. Now I have a, a, a question from Francine uh, Pro. again, very difficult for me to pronounce. Um, you say phytoestrogens uh, can help prevent breast cancer. I didn't say phy phytoestrogens, I said phytohormones, and the one that I was talking about is specifically phytoprogesterone. Um, what about the idea 
to refrain from eating soy products. Yes, there's a controversy on that because soy has uh, some estrogenic substances and we have to assume that they're good because uh, women in oriental countries like China and Japan have a very low incidence of, of, of cancer of the breast and they consume a tremendous amounts of, of soy and soy products and byproducts. What happens as some uh, researchers have concluded is that there's uh, like, you know, the good cholesterol and bad cholesterol, there's good estrogen and bad estrogen and they consider the estrogen from soy to be one of the good ones because it blocks um, estrogen receptors similarly to tamoxifen and that's why it actually prevents. So that's uh, one of the explanations for, for that. Um, now let me go to um, Carolyn Rudder, Dr. Contreras mentioned phytohormones. Some creams contain, uh, definitely, uh, you will find many, many uh, will contain various natural estrogens in the ratios uh, recommended by Dr. Lee. And Dr. Contreras comment on the risk of breast cancer with natural hormone replacement. Uh, Dr. Lee definitely um, is one of the authorities in this. And uh, again, we're talking about natural uh, progesterone, although some women will need natural estrogens and in, in, in very few cases do we recommend the combination of natural progesterone and natural estrogens. Uh, uh, the, the risk of uh, hormone replacement with Premarin and in many of the other replacements is, is now very well documented and it, it increases the risk between 10 and 70% uh, depending on the studies that you look for. So um, uh, the more you can stay away from hormone replacement therapy, the better you're going to fare. Now, Sandra Bright asks, I have been diagnosed with DCIS high grade. Have you seen remission of this with natural therapies as they were recommending uh, surgery? Uh, a third of the removal of the breast full mastectomy. I have two areas of DCIS and one of cellular atypia. I, my recommendation is that, uh, again, and not to be overtreated, I think that the full mastectomy is, is an exaggeration, although when you have multiple DCISs, it is difficult to find them and to determine what area of the breast needs to be removed because they are so small. Uh, some doctors, uh, especially radiologists, will mark the area of the DCIS so that the surgeon can then go in and, and, and remove that area and that way you avoid, avoid the mastectomy. Uh, and usually this treatment is curative. Now, Roberta Thomas is asking, do you think sugar and candida are a major factor in cancer. I have heard uh, it said cancer is a fungus. There's many people that believe that cancer is a fungus and that um, obviously candida is a fungus and that sugar plays a major, major role. Sugar plays a role because cancers thrive on sugar. Uh, and uh, uh, fungus may play a role, but uh, the truth is that um, if it were so, uh, Underdeveloped countries would have a much higher incidence of cancer of the breast than developed countries because uh, people in underdeveloped countries tend to have less hygiene and less possibilities to maintain their houses completely free of uh, bugs and, 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 and uh, mold. And, and, and thus, uh, I, I have doubt that this is a true uh, reason for cancer of the breast. I think that it plays a role because any bug be it bacteria, virus, or, or fungus, is going to distract and occupy uh, our immune system and thus uh, render the immune system insufficient and uh, opportunistic diseases like cancer will then appear much easier if you have those. So getting rid of candida is definitely a very good idea, uh, but as I mentioned, I just don't feel that it is the real cause of cancer. Uh, Francine Lepore has, my breast cancer was both estrogen receptor positive and progesterone receptor positive. Does that mean that I cannot use progesterone cream? Um, it is a very good question and uh, the first thing Francine is that uh, these type of cancers are less aggressive and much better treated and uh, I would not recommend the natural progesterone either uh, because you are right. The, this cancer can respond both through estrogen and progesterone and you are going to respond very, very well 
to a, um, a hormone blocking agent and, and that's the only thing that has proven to really prolong the life of uh, uh, breast cancer patients. So <clears throat> I think you are uh, you, 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 were, uh, you have a very good prognosis. Uh, Sandra Bright again asks, uh, would love your opinion on IV uh, C therapy or, or IV uh, infusion of vitamin C and Iskador. We did a number of studies of Iskador in the late 70s, early 80s and found it to be quite effective, but uh, lateral to be a lot more effective than Iskador and that is why in many of the hospitals and clinics in Mexico, lateral is used above Iskador. That doesn't mean that Iskador was not good, it said that Latrol was better. And uh, vitamin C infusion therapy, um, well, since 2000, a number of publications from the NIH and the NCI uh, discovered that uh, vitamin C is actually an anti-tumor agent when used in very, very high dosages and only when used IV. Uh, so the, the type of uh, uh, Intravenous um, vitamin C therapy that we do here is based on the publications from the NCI. And you have to give it in very high dosages in, very, in a very short time in order to have the impact uh, uh, that you want to have as, a, as an anti-tumor agent. And basically the vitamin C is a pro-drug. It, 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 it sets the stage for the uh, production of hydrogen peroxide within the tumor in the presence of oxygen. So you have to prepare the patient and you have to <coughs> create a, 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 an environment in the tumor, within the tumor, for the peroxide to be produced. So it's not just giving vitamin C uh, in high dosages. It is, um, it is a uh, fairly complicated procedure that should be done by people that know what they're doing in order to have the results. Uh, it's not dangerous because vitamin C is not going to be uh, toxic, but if you don't do it correctly, you're not going to have results either. Um, Lisa is asking, I had stage 2 uh, in the breast in 2003 and did chemo radiation, both breasts removed, over is removed, and I have BRC2 gene with the last month, it, within the last month it has gone to a small area in the bone. How long would I need to be at your clinic? The first thing that I want to tell you, Lisa, is that um, this uh, uh, appearance in the bone definitely needs to be taken care of, but you don't have to do it like today and drop everything that you're doing. You can make all of the arrangements and uh, get to us as soon as you can. Call our, our number and uh, we'll help you make all of the arrangements and I hope that you can come. We have a lot to offer for you. Uh, Lori N. is asking, I have a thermographic, a thermography clinic in Canada, which is itself, which in itself is a bit of a challenge, <laughs> changing the thinking with women from mammograms to thermography. What is the best advice for breast health that I can uh, pass on to women to better their scoring? change of diet, exercise, supplementation. I'd be very happy, Lori, to provide you with the slides uh, that we presented today. I don't know if you, you kept them, but I, I will send them to you. There's vast information out there about what we're talking about. And just the fact that, um, you, you know, you don't have to convince them very much. Everybody understands that radiation is carcinogenic and uh, that the breast is very sensitive to, um, to, to radiation and so every time they take a mammogram it will increase their chances of uh, developing cancer by 2%. I think this is a very strong argument and that through thermography you can actually see the lesions and, and show it to them and with that they can either go to a, an MRI or a, a, a sonogram but when there is a high possibility of this tumor being malignant that is when and only when a mammography is indicated. So I think just providing them with this type of information, Lisa, you are going to be able to help a lot of uh, people. I, I commend you for the work that you're doing. You are swimming against the current and we'll keep you in our prayers so that you 
uh, survive and help a lot more people in Canada than you know just a typical uh, uh, diagnostic centers are doing for them. Um, Villanueva, a Villanueva is asking, my mother has uh, given six months to, was given six months to live by a U.S. doctor. With uh, your protocol of IRTC, no cancer in the biopsy, tumor markers, and bone scan, your organization is a blessing. Uh, okay, so you came to us and, and your mother was given six months to live and now she's alive because of our protocols. God bless you, uh, uh, Mrs. Villanueva, and God bless your mother as well. Uh, Ernesto Arturo Herrera, you divide into three treatment cycles in the hospital followed by 30 days follow-up in their home. What statistics have on the response of patients with metastatic breast cancer in each period or must meet the three cycles anyway? Well, uh, cancer of the breast is a is a complicated cancer and, and usually one or even three treatments uh, may not be sufficient. So we do an evaluation. Every cycle we ask our patients, uh, there's a separation of about three to four weeks depending on the case per cycle. So at the end of three cycles, it's four months, we're able to determine you know, if we need to make any adjustments in the therapy and if we're going uh, in, in the good direction, how much more um, uh, uh, tumor activity there is left and so uh, some patients will take six or even ten cycles depending on, on, on the response. Um, so the, the fact that we begin with three cycles doesn't mean that that's it and that, that nothing else is going to be done. Uh, so that is just actually the beginning of the therapy and our patients will continue with home uh, therapy for their, the rest of their lives. The more compliant they are with treatment, the better results they're going to have. Uh, because of time uh, constraints, I will answer one more question. The rest of the questions, in a few days, we will post all of the answers on our, on our Facebook and on our page. The last question I'm going to take is from Sharon Harris. MD Anderson suggested an MRI biopsy. I had a severe reaction to gadolinium once before. They basically laughed at me for reporting it. I had severe leg pain when I got home and I couldn't hardly get off the couch for about two hours. Let me just comment on that. I'm, I'm sorry that they laughed at you because uh, nobody should be laughed when, when you're having those uh, uh, symptoms. The reason why it is difficult to believe uh, is because very, very few people have reactions to gadolinium. That doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. And if it happened to you, we have to take that into consideration. And most likely, you're not going to be a candidate for an MRI anymore. And what they're using the MRI for is to know exactly where the tumor is and so that the surgeon goes and removes that without removing the whole breast. Now, this can be done now with sonography as well or maybe even thermography. So if you're not a candidate for MRI, well, you cannot do them anymore. Then the, the, the question follows, I have not been diagnosed with breast cancer, um, by my, but my mother died from it and I have calcifications. I've uh, been advised to take tamoxifen or Evista and have declined. I take a number of supplements recommended by my natural foods nutritionist. What types do you recommend? Now, the fact that your mother had cancer uh, increases the risk not because there's genetics in it but because you probably are following your mother's footsteps as far as lifestyle. Just by changing your lifestyle uh, you can be benefited. But the fact is that you have calcifications within the tumor. This micro calcifications within the tumor are a red flag and that is why they want you to consider hormone blocking agents like tamoxifen. In my opinion, uh, lifestyle changes are going to be a lot more effective and if you exercise, if you're able to exercise and let's say jog four hours a day, you are going to consume so much cholesterol that the production of hormones is going to be diminished significantly to the point that uh, you are not going to be feeding that tumor. And in your case, my recommendation for natural progesterone would be 
are very indicated and would help you tremendously. And just follow this uh, calcifications for the next six months to a year. And if nothing changes, I think you would be fine. Uh, but definitely in your case with microclassifications, if a biopsy would be possible or removal of that tumor, that would be the best for you, Sharon. Again, this is the last question that I can take due to time restraints. Thank you very much for attending the webinar, webinar and um, God bless you. We'll be in touch.